Ninjago has had a wide array of side characters over the years, some being incredibly fun additions that would quickly become popular fan favorites. The Wild Brain era, or 11 Minute era as some are calling it now, is known for featuring a huge variety of side characters, but there's one to me that stands out more than anyone else, and that would be Benthamar. While I feel that most of these 11 Minute era side characters are a tad shallow and rather underdeveloped, Benthamar sticks out to me as being one that fully takes advantage of the season that he's in and genuinely elevates the story, making the season better than it would have been had he not been included. And while characters like Akita come close to doing the same, Bentho to me is an almost perfect example of how you write and define a season specific character. Benthamar's introduction in Seabound is already a really strong start to his character, as rather than giving him some kind of big entrance or reveal, he's introduced more naturally and nonchalantly within the season, giving us some small information as to who he is while also creating intrigue for the character. We had just been introduced to Kalmar, so seeing where he comes from is the next logical step, perfectly segueing into Bentho's brief but impactful introduction. The way that Bentho refers to Kalmar as his brother, only for Kalmar to immediately shut down this notion, acts as a good way to show a hint at their dynamic, while also naturally providing a new piece of information about Benthamar, as he is adopted by the king. During this confrontation between Trimar and Kalmar, Bentho's compassion for humans is made even more clear through a small piece of dialogue, as well as his misguided trust for Kalmar. See, father, I told you he didn't. Sometimes their ships just sink on their own. It's very sad. In just a short scene, Benthamar's compassionate, innocent, and well-meaning nature is established, traits that would go on to be challenged later. Another thing that I want to touch on is Bentho's design. In this first scene, Benthamar's appearance immediately stands out, quickly drawing attention to himself. And while his appearance is explained by him being adopted, likely coming from somewhere far away from Merlopia, it also shows early on that he will be an important character to the story. His design adds background, importance, and intrigue to the character as his origin is unknown. This first scene does a great job of introducing the audience to this brand new character, establishing his ties to Merlopia, his personality, and his dynamic with Kalmar, while subtly hinting at his importance later on. So now that Bento had been introduced, it was time for his call to action. Something that I love about Benthamar's story is that he pretty much goes through an entire hero's journey that happens somewhat in the background of the whole season. Most side character stories are either resolved in a few episodes, or don't reach a very satisfying conclusion. Benthamar is able to quickly appear and immediately make you root for him, even with the minuscule amount of runtime he is given, without anything feeling forced or even rushed. Trimar's death is a great example of this, while also setting up Benthamar's personal motives for the rest of the season. Benthamar's love for his father is made clear as it is directly contrasted with Kalmar's cruel distaste for him. Kalmar lazily playing off the fact that he was the one to kill Trimar as Benthamar fully believes him and attempts to help shows how drastic the disconnect is between these two characters and further displays the consequences of Bentho's innocence and compassion as his affection for his brother causes him to fall for his tricks despite how many times he had been lied to in the past. That would soon change, however, as his father's dying words would forever change him and define his motives moving forward. As his father passes, he tells Bentho the truth about Kalmar, which was all Bentho needed to hear to finally stop trusting him for good. And with Trimar's final words being to help the surface dwellers, Bentho had his call to action to begin his journey and avenge his fallen father. It's really hard to make an audience care for a character with just a few minutes of screen time, but I think Bento's pure innocence and willingness to see the good and even the worst of people makes you really want to root for him. 
and immediately seeing him have to deal with the fact that the people that you look up to can do terrible things is devastating and is a great catalyst for his story. Betrayal is a strong motivator, and seeing a character as kind and caring as Bentho having to go through that is as compelling as it is sad. The next step in Benthamar's journey involves him taking his first steps into the unknown and crossing the threshold, finding a new family with the ninja and committing to helping stop his brother before he awakens with Jira and destroys the surface world. After hearing the truth about Kalmar, he is quick to help the ninja escape from Merlopia, his first actions directly contributing to his father's dying wish. And what's interesting is that the ninja act as a supernatural aid to Bentho, as to him the surface dwellers are otherworldly in nature, and would later prove to be helpful to him. After he helps him escape, Bentho retells the tale of how he was adopted into the royal family. The flashback is quick to highlight Kalmar's disdain for Bentho, as despite Bentho's efforts, he has never shown any affection in return. I also want to point out how truly evil Kalmar is towards Bentho in this episode, as it makes his eventual defeat all the more satisfying. But we will of course get to that later. Seeing Bentho catch a glimmer of hope as Kalmar finally invites him to spend time together only for the rug to be pulled out from under him when it's revealed that he was only using Bentho to find the temple is incredibly sad to witness. We see Bentho's optimistic and caring nature and how it can be manipulated by people like Kalmar. It builds our sympathy for him even more while acting as a realization for Bentho that not everyone will like you for who you are, no matter how kind of a person you may be. What this flashback does is do a great job at showing how desperate Bentho was to find someone who actually cared for him. Because at the end of the day, King Trimar was the only person he really had. And now that he's gone, he feels truly alone. The ninja of course reassure him that he isn't alone and that he has a new family now. And in accepting that, Bentho Bar finally crosses the threshold and marches into the land of the unknown as he leaves his home behind and journeys with the ninja. This is where his journey truly begins. Bentho had now officially taken sides with the ninja and had sworn to defeat his brother, but his compassion had yet to be tested. Once the team returns to Ninjago City, we see another run-in with Kalmar in which he tells Bentho that he could still join him in his quest to rule the surface. And while it's a very simple way to present growth within a character, I think Bentho's refusal to accept this offer actually speaks volumes to the journey Benthamar had already begun to take. Through his introduction and flashback, we see how desperate Benthamar is for compassion and his brother's approval and admiration. But when seemingly given the opportunity to make amends with him, he is used and manipulated. Despite this, we see that he still attempts to make friendly conversation with Kalmar. He doesn't hold this against him, and he still wants to be his brother. But now that he knows what he did to his father, and now that he's been traveling with the ninja, he's finally able to directly refuse Kalmar's offer to help him, something that Benthamar at the beginning of the story wouldn't have been able to do. And in refusing Kalmar's request, he takes another step in accepting his newfound family. And when he's invited by Nia to stay at the monastery, he's almost unable to believe it. This is the first time since meeting his father that he had been met with nothing but approval and kindness, just like he had been known to treat everyone else. In denying Kalmar, he accepted his new friends, but his greatest challenge was just ahead of him. At the end of the day, Seabound is still Nia's season, but in my eyes, Kalmar is Benthamar's villain. Of course, it makes sense for Nia to be the one to destroy Wojira, but Kalmar is Bentho's fight and his alone. It's a matchup that the entire season had been subtly hinting towards. After all this time, Benthamar had overcome his attachment towards who he thought was his brother. His father's dying words were to protect the surface dwellers, and with Kalmar attempting to flood the whole world, it left him with no other choice but to face him head on, directly confronting the person who made him feel so alone in the first place. But Benthamar isn't doing this purely for revenge. Just before he goes to attack Kalmar, he witnesses as both Nia and Jay are struck down in an attempt to stop him. For all he knows, the person who recently welcomed him into their home, the first person, mind you, to do something like that for him since he met his adopted father, has merged with the sea permanently, and has been destroyed by who he thought and desperately believed to be his brother. So his final stand is a last faithful attempt at protecting his new family. He's not going to lose the only people who ever cared for him a second time. When the fight starts, Kalmar again refers to Bento as his adopted brother, but for the first time, Benthamar is the one denying any form of relation between the two. Benthamar declaring that Kalmar isn't his brother is an incredibly powerful moment, representing how far he has come since meeting him. For his entire childhood, 
Bentho simply wanted to be acknowledged as family by Kalmar, so seeing him downright deny the idea of being related to him solidifies how much he has grown independent from him. He is a new family now. He doesn't need to rely on Kalmar's affection to feel wanted. He will never take the place of his father, and Bentho will make sure he pays for taking his father away from him. And I just want to give special props to the voice actor of Bentho, Cole Howard, for his amazing vocal performance in this scene. Bentho's scream when attacking Kalmar here says everything you need to know about what he's feeling in this moment. Hey, for what you did to him! You can feel the pain and anger behind his voice, from the loss of his father and the betrayal of Kalmar. It's one of the most powerful vocal performances in all of Ninjago. And by the end of this battle, Bentho denounces Kalmar's rulership over him one last time. Kalmar may have been able to manipulate Bentho in the past, but now Kalmar had no control. He lost control over Benthamar, and finally, he lost control over Wojira. And after he is swallowed by the serpent, we get a shot of Bentho's reaction, showcasing that even though he got revenge and protected his friends, the last part of his old family is now gone forever. The person he looked up to and wanted to get along with so badly is gone. Much like Seabound itself, Bentho's story doesn't have a particularly happy ending. He found a new friend in Nia, who was the first person to welcome him into a new family since his father had passed. But by the end, she is of course gone. He dethroned Kalmar and avenged his father, but now his once brother is gone too. But Bentho did complete his journey. He protected the surface dwellers and in return found a new family that truly cared for him. He finally came to the realization that he could stand up to Kalmar and stand up for what he believes in. And the ninja gave him the confidence to do that. Could Benthamar's story have been fleshed out more? Absolutely. But unfortunately, a single season of Ninjago has only so much runtime. And for what they were able to accomplish with a single side character, I think they did a really good job telling an inspiring, yet somewhat tragic story. Like I said, Benthamar is my favorite Ninjago side character. He feels so intertwined with the story of Seabound, while also being a fantastically written standalone character. And I honestly believe he has as much story potential as a character like Garmadon, who has had his story expanded in other media. All I'm saying is please make a Benthamar comic series. Benthamar.